Out. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, goodness gracious. I didn't know. <laughs> I was getting my phone because I wanted to get the sloth. We want to oh take a picture. Yes. Look, this adorable sloth Big. that Grant brought from Wild World of Animals. Oh and you know what? And, and then there's this. I know. Which one? <laughs> I mean, so which do you want to start with? Do you want to start with the baby kangaroo? We're going to start with Taz here. What's he, his he, name? Taz. Taz. T A Z. Exactly. He's in, the, he's in that realm. He was actually born at our zoo, and unfortunately for him, his mom kicked him out. I was kind of making the rounds one day, and he was laying there on the ground. It happens sometimes. In the wild, mother roos will actually eject the baby if they're being chased by a predator. It's kind of like, yeah, here you wow. go. Yeah, they're not winning mother of the year. So. I guess not, no. <laughs> but here's the thing. 30 days later, she basically can have another baby. When they're born, they're the size of a jelly bean. They're still basically an embryo. At any one time, a mother roo can have three different babies at three different life stages. One outside the pouch, hopping around, but still nursing. One in the pouch, but very developed like him, and then a newborn. And she can develop three different types of milks to meet their different needs at wow. those different age groups. Wow. That's amazing. It is really amazing. Um, I, I don't know if it's a he or she, but very alert and looking around. Yeah, he is just at a point where, you know, when we bring him out, he'll kind of still trying to get his footing and hops a little bit, but falls over. Eventually, of course, he'll be over six feet tall. He is a male red kangaroo. That's the largest marsupial in the world. He would be <laughs> able, at, a, at full size, to leap over my head. <gasps> no kidding. Yeah. I know that the kids all want to touch, but I don't know. If yeah, it might be a little yeah. bit too much for him to let okay. everybody touch. So but he's looking around at all the kids. Oh, he's very aware. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in the hierarchy of animal intelligence and mammals in particular, they're not real high up the list, <laughs> but they're smart enough <laughs> to have an awareness of what's going on. Okay, and sloths are like the new llama. All the kids love sloths Everybody right now. Everybody loves sloths. Yeah, now, once again, not a pet. Um, Amy here, my sloth, and I've been with her for her whole entire life. But my first encounter with her, she literally bit through my thumb. Yeah, oh. Not a mean animal, just that not That was your pet. first date with her? That was my first interaction <laughs> with her, yes. We've gotten so much better now. Now we're buddies, we're best chums, but she is aware of the difference between me and other people. And I've seen her not necessarily like everyone she meets. Big, full beards, she is not having it. No, oh, really? no go. Okay. And you have to grow yours out a little bit more, Mountain Man, for it to have that effect. But yeah, she sees a beard and she's like, no, no, no. It's like smelling its foot. Did you guys all see Zootopia? Yeah. Yes. Do you remember the sloth that worked at the DMV? Yeah. 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 And so, are they really that slow moving? They are. They yeah. are incredibly slow. They can move faster you than see, what you, you would think. No, but I apologize to everyone at the DMV. Yeah. Well, it's pretty fitting. <laughs> but they will sleep 22 hours a day, even then hitting the snooze button. Everything is in slow motion, and all this together hides them from their number one predator, the harpy eagle. So we talked about the falcon right, and their vision right. being so incredible. The slightest movement a harpy could pick up on, and believe it or not, a harpy eagle, massive, so strong, would fly down, just basically sink the talons in and rip her right off a branch. And that's not easy. She can support her entire body weight with just one foot. Wow. wow. You know, it's so interesting when you get closer to these animals, how you can kind of see other animals in them. Oh, yeah. Like when the sloth stretched out, you can almost see a little bit of a monkey in yeah. it. And yeah. when you're looking at the kangaroo, it almost looks like a little bit of a rabbit or a hare. You know, you it, can see them. He is just looking cute right now. Literally a few months ago, it, it was kind of like a radish look. Yeah. Without the hair, it's, it's not the cutest. But oh, yeah, that, yeah, that is adorable. Isn't yeah. that so cute? All right, before we let this go, uh, do any of you have any questions about either the kangaroo or the sloth? No. Well, hit me. Yeah, all all right, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Here we go. Good question. Central and South America. There's two different types of sloth. There's a two-toed and a three-toed. Amy's a two-toed. But you look at her back foot, she's got three toes. So when you tell the difference, only look at the front. Two-toed has two, three-toed three, but then three in the back. Interesting. So cool. Okay, we have one more question, and then okay, we have to right wrap here? up and go to commercial. What do they eat? What Good do they question. Eat? They're called a foliivore, and that means they eat leaves. So in the wild, and it's the only animal we know of, when she eats something, it can take 30 days for her to her body to process that food. So it's the only animal we know of that could die of starvation with a full stomach of food. 
You it's are really so crazy. You know what? Stinky. She's looking at Heather and I. I really think she watches PTL. She does. Thank oh, you. Yeah, I knew it. I can spot a PTL viewer <laughs> anywhere. Brad, thank That's why you she's here. so much. <laughs> and for more information on the wild world of animals, go to our website, PittsburghTodayLive.com. We have so much information and a link for it there. We'll be right back with a check on our local forecast. Plus, we are smashing Marie's alarm clock. She's <laughs> turning in her headset after 40 years, so she doesn't need to get up at 2 a.m. anymore. Yeah, we're all heading outside. We hear there are pops. So it's a pop and a smash when PTO comes right back.